Hi, everyone. Welcome to Beacons of Balance. Thank you for joining us. I'm Arlene. This is Linda and our guest speaker, Joanne Koenig Mako. Um, I want to thank everybody for taking your time. We're very grateful and honored that you're taking your time to be with us and enjoy the show. And this month's topic has been on near-death experience and spirituality. So we're gonna I'm gonna give a little background on Joanne. So um, Joanne is a visionary artist and event producer and presenter and author. She's an international artist. Joanne continuously creates new visionary art for the world. Her lumin luminous paintings have been uh, presented to many world leaders, ambassadors, heads of state, former presidents at the United Nations. Um, Joanne has authored three books, Surviving Earth School. There's three three different ones. Um, and just getting back from her honeymoon in 1980, she was on a major highway with her husband in Ohio. Joanne and her husband, um, they were hit in their car by a drunk driver. Um, she suffered a major blow to her head and trauma and her body. Um, police said um, she should have never survived that accident. I knew my life mission. And I always told my mom, I says, mom, I'm going to be a famous artist or a doctor. So she'd always like, bless her heart. She would go out and buy all the John Nagy, learn to draw sets. And wow. she'd give me all the doctor kits, you know, with the plastic needles and stuff. Yeah. And lo and behold, I did go to med school at Case, um, and I learned physiology, anatomy, everything about the body. And then they assign you, you know, in different hospitals, training hospitals, and I passed out in the morgue. And I'm like, screw this, this is not going to like, And then because it was a it was a low end area where that where they stuck me in this hospital, you saw everything, you know. Oh God, it was like. So I said, you know what? I'm not supposed to be doing this. And uh, look, look at me now. Fast forward, I'm working on over 6,000 clients at just doing it in a different way, doing it energetically. But uh, it's been a journey. And in 1980, as Arlene mentioned, um, well, let's see. I was still living in Ohio then. And I was just finishing up writing my first book, Ohio, You Have Something to Crow About. It was a hardbound book about Ohio's restaurants and inns and recipes that made them famous. And I was coming back from our last interview and my husband was driving on this Cleveland shoreway, busy shoreway, I might add, on a Friday night when all the drunks are coming in from partying. And out of nowhere, this drunk driver hit us and we catapulted like 100 feet. It's like, and we had a big car at the time. You know, those cars from the 70s, they were like built like Sherman tanks, right? And were you strapped in? I was strapped in. Uh, but the impact was so great. He drove right up the yellow line. And I got the worst of it because I was on the passenger side. And I just remember everything was going in circles and it's like fireworks. Um, and we ended up facing oncoming traffic. I was like, okay, this is the way. It was bad enough, right? But now we're I'm like, this is going to be the one-two punch. This is the way I go out. And I'm like, crap, I just got married. It's the first thing. <laughs> we just got back. And I waited. So I was like 31 before I got married. Right. I was one of the, I was even 20 minutes late for my own wedding. You know, I, mean, I, I held out to the last biological tick of the time clock, you know? <laughs> wow. And here I was, it's like, they had to cut us out. And I don't remember anything. I just remember being in the emergency ward in the uh, ER on a busy Friday night. And they were cutting my clothes off. And I'm like, all I remember, I'm telling you, I was wearing red silk bikini underwear. <laughs> and it was embroidered with a ship going down. And it said, don't give, don't give up the ship. I'm like, oh, my God, whoever worked on me must have had a chuckle that night. Right. But yeah, you, you know, it's like you, your whole mind just you're going crazy because they're poking pins in me. And I can't feel anything from my waist down. Wow. And I'm thinking. God, I waited this long. Finally, everything's going my way. My first book, I just got married. And here I'm thinking I'm going to be, you know, paralyzed the rest of my life. So seven years of therapy, um, the doctors all wanted me to get surgery. I saw the top doctors in New York and they said, you know, they're looking at my MRIs and they're saying, well, you know, by the time you're 50, you're still going to be in excruciating pain. You'll be lucky if you could walk normal. And there was something that came over me. Like, oh my God. 
I grabbed the x-rays off the wall and I said, don't you dare put that out to the universe. And he was, he was like so shocked because he was like on the board in Israel and all over. I'm like, so I kind of knew at the time, it's like, I'm not going anywhere. I got work to do. If I survive that, I have work to do. But the hell was being laid on a backboard, being spoon fed <clears throat> and the excruciating pain. They had me on 13 meds at one point. And it's like, I couldn't even keep them down. And you get to a point where you're like, screw this. If I'm supposed to die, then I'm going to die. But I am not going to put this crap in my body anymore. And I was only, oh my God, you know, it's now we're in, we were in Connecticut at that time. And the pain was so excruciating. I had people coming over. They thought, <laughs> this is it. You know, and um, I, as I lay there, I, I became the student. I couldn't go anywhere, right? So I was forced to listen to these messages. And these messages were so clear coming in my ear. They were telepathic. And it said, until you learn to forgive this man with your heart and truly mean it, you are never going to heal. And I'm like, what do you mean heal this man and forgive him? I said, my life is over as I know it. And they gave me, they meaning, I perceive them as my guides, my spirit angels. Uh, they gave me life lessons one after another that were so profound. And they said, what if, just what if this man was your best friend before you came here to earth school and that he loved you so much that he agreed to go through this journey with you so that you could A, learn forgiveness and B, learn how to heal yourself. And I was wow. like, wow, mind blown. Wow. Like, I started looking at this from a completely different viewpoint. So that's a good lesson, guys. If any, because we've all been through trauma. This Did earth, he live, by the way? He was fine because he was so drunk, and there was no drunk driving laws at the time. So he got away, and we got nothing for that. It's like we had a lousy lawyer. You know, today you get a bump in the head, you know, a little, and you get millions. Yeah. So, but it wasn't about the money. It was never about the money with me this whole lifetime. Um, it was about the lessons that I had to learn, you know, and from those lessons, and there were plenty, fast forward, did I ever think that 30 years down the road, I'd be working on all these people that just come in from all over the world so that I could show them how to look at life just a little bit differently so they wouldn't hold on to anger and hatred. And I'm sure you do this for a living. You know, there are some of your clients that refuse to forgive, you know. Some, oh, and, and they just, you can't change them, but you can maybe change the way they look at things. Yeah, you can't change anybody. You cannot change anybody. But us being the way showers, you know, we could we could give them the tools. I can't heal anybody. Nobody heals. But non-forgiveness causes a state of resistance. Oh, oh my and, God. And listen, when I finally forgave my father, I mean, really forgave him. Yeah. Oh my God, my whole world just opened up. It's like yeah. magic. I had even things I wanted that I sat on never happened started to happen. Exactly. That's what happens. So when I start looking at it from the angle that I was shown, that what if this guy was my best friend? What a gift he just gave me. I said thank you to him. I never met the guy, but I lay there in bed because I couldn't move. And I'm like, thank you. Wherever you are, whoever you are, I get it. Thank you. What a gift that you love and cared about me so much. I'm like, I'm going to get off the club here, but um, it does. It's like he changed my life, literally. Yeah. I even think oh. the cancer, the breast cancer. I got breast cancer and thought oh. my life was over. It's a long story, but I thank the cancer. You and thank, yes, cool. you thank the disease too. I thank the disease. You get it. You know, this this earth school, as my guides call it, is a place you come here to learn or teach exactly. lessons. Exactly. And sometimes these lessons really suck, as you oh, know. Oh, they hurt too sometimes. Oh, it's like, dang. We're still in the human existence form, so we do cycle through. So yeah. I think when we talk about, like, the forgiveness and everything, uh, yeah, we go through. I mean, we know because we've experienced it and we know what you do and everything. But then you get hit. I remember <laughs> specifically when this lesson came to me as far as forgiveness yeah it's 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 what? almost easier to forgive the people that have passed on cuz they're in spirit so yeah. you could just you know we know how to connect with them or write a letter and burn it but the ones that are still living that you have to 
and they face to face. And I did this with my first ex. I called, I called him up, even though we were, it wasn't a great divorce, you know, it wasn't like that. And I said, I don't, I'll never forget. I forget. And I was ironing. I remember I said, I'll forgive you. I forgive you for what you've done to me and forgive me for what I've done to you. Those were the, I just made it very simple. Right. right. <laughs> Well, a few days later, he calls me up because the house had just sold. It took like three years to sell that house, Joanne, that we had. And he goes, all right. Now, the divorce had been over for, you know, we were divorced already over four years, right? He goes, all right. Now he goes about the, the furniture. And I go, I go, what? I go, that was all, that's been, that was in the divorce decree. That was already settled. You know what I mean? So yeah. he already did the forgiveness process. And then he came back with this and I'm like, eh. But <laughs> I I let it go. And I knew the bottom line. It probably wasn't from him. It was from who he was married to at the time. And I said, um, I knew it was probably over money. And I said, I said, take what you want. What do you want? You know? I said, have it. I don't care. There, take it. Take take it. it all right. And, you know, it was done. But, I mean, so we do cycle um, to let everybody know when you do, you know, it's not like you do it or we heal the wounds and that's, or something happens to us major or horrific and we forgive it, but it doesn't mean we forget the things. And as we live our life, those things will come back up. But I think when they come up, we don't etch it in the record. We don't keep going over and over and over. We just let it kind of fly by and let it go. Right. Now, do you both, because you're both you know, professionals and you do this for a living. Uh, now, do you notice when the lessons come up? It just, boom. Yeah. Instead of when we were in our 20s, You'd hang on to Oh, that. yeah, hang on. Oh, yeah. How did that serve our giftedness? You hang and, on and you you just decide, you pull it apart. You like oh, do a surgery God. on it. And what did they mean by this? And what does that mean? And what if this happens? Or what you play all the scenarios. And it doesn't. We're our own worst enemies. You yeah. know, but it oh, took, yeah. like this. almost everything we've been, what I was shown, everything that was taught to us is just, we're living in this illusion. You know, think of all the beliefs. They said that you come in here with trillions, oh, trillions I know. of beliefs and passed down from ancestral, genetic. I know. Oh, my God. And then historic, like, we, because one of you, like, well, Linda, I'm there showing me that you were in the Trail of Tears. You were on this uh, through Montana. Um, forgive me. When I'm in your energy space, I'm going to start picking up stuff. I'll even start sketching. I'm going to start sketching your guides as we're talking here. Um <laughs> But that's just, it just happens now. Um, but anyway, yeah, we had to go through all this, you know, and there's just, oh my gosh. But then when we moved to uh, Connecticut, that's when things really, really lit up for me because I had to get out of a city where there was too much commotion and I couldn't hear my guides, you know, as much as they wanted me to. They put me in Monroe, Connecticut. Yeah. Cowtown. Population five thousand. Cow town. I'm cow town now. <laughs> We're next to sixty acres of woods, and I was well known for painting these historic landmarks. I did shows all up and down the coast. I had a booming business, you know, painting everything the way it looked in the 1700s. And wow. I'm filling an order for this shop in Milford, or and I'm getting this message crystal clear in my ear: the order you are working on is not important. And I'm like, oh Jesus! I'm like, am I losing it or what? Because you know. I thought for sure I'm going off the deep end here. And it kept, it came through three times. The order you are working on is not important. It says, okay, so I stop. And it's like, I get a call from the, the shop owner saying, Joanne, I, this has never happened, but I have to cancel that order. We just lost our lease. So I was like, you know, you got the God bumps. Yeah. His voice said, go outside, take your canvas and your paints. And now I'm in the backyard and it said, you are to paint an angel. And I'm like, the hell? I I would not have paid an angel if you paid me a million bucks. That's because like, you were around my energy. That's because you were around my energy, Joanne. Oh my God. But that's why I laughed at something, Linda, you cracked me up the other day when you said you were arguing with them. <laughs> you argue with your guides when they give you these messages. Yeah. I was true. I was arguing in my backyard. I'm like, I don't paint angels. I'm only that's like when they told me to do that YouTube channel. I thought I want to get up and brush my hair. Yeah. We become like whiny little brats. Like, I don't yeah. Want to so they said, and then what really freaked me out, they said, Put your brushes down. You were to paint these with your bare hands. And I'm like, what? I get these fat hands. And they said, look around you, child. Your backyard is your toolbox. So I'm picking up dried daylily stems, twigs. And I started applying everything. 
first with my fingers, like I was back in, you know, kindergarten. And then for detail, I start seeing these images appearing on the canvas. And then to get the detail, I use the flower stems, twigs for finite detail. And what came out in the course of that day was Guardian Angel, the first one I ever did. And I was like, oh my God, who did this? I got you. Because it's like, it was like, how do you, I couldn't even put it into words. And when I'd walk left to right, looking at this painting, it changed color. She'd go from blonde hair to like reddish brown. And I called Arlene up because you, Arlene, you were, you had your shop at the time and I told you what happened. And you arranged for uh, someone to come into your shop to interview me from Hartford. I forget. It's been so long now. Well, yeah, we always connected. <laughs> I get, get people connected. Yeah. And it's like I was doing the interview in your shop. And that's when that girl, you had a big picture window. And she stopped and she saw it. She came in and she started crying in front of it. And then the mother comes in right after and said, what's going on? And this girl says, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm losing it here. I don't know why I'm, I'm acting like this in front of this painting. And the mother said to Arlene, how much is this? I'm like, wait a minute. I'm thinking to myself, I didn't even have it professionally photographed. Nothing. It's my first one. And I think <laughs> Arlene, you said $3,000. And she just gives you the credit card. It was like, what the? just happened yeah three thousand dollars i said thousand dollars. okay and she paid three thousand yep. just yeah just like that but it happened so fast i didn't have time to think you know it was just like what just happened you know and i put my color jc penny double wide underwears up for bed and nobody gave it down <laughs> i didn't get no three give them to me linda give them to me i'll sell them for you <laughs> oh my god our links can sell an eskimo and icebox i swear to god <laughs> You want something to just give it to her. her <laughs> stuff here you could sell for me. I'm not kidding. I, I have no <laughs> good places. Forget it. So yeah, it's um, it was just one thing after another after another, and I finally I took up tennis, you know, for therapy. I sucked at tennis. I didn't even know how to hold a racket. I, but we had one of the best tennis courts in down the street, and they trained all the Olympians and everything. They were like really good. So fast forward, I'm playing tennis and I'm getting better and better. And all of a sudden, it's like I'm getting this message again in my ear. You're going to be in the championships. What are you talking about? Of tennis? Tennis. I'm like, I didn't know what a racket was. I didn't know. I had no clue, you know. And um, a couple of years down the road after practicing and practicing, I got on a team and we played and my part, I was playing doubles and we won the state championship. I was making shots like, where is this coming from? It was almost like somebody took over my hand. I'll tell you, that's exciting. And then they said, no, it's going to get, they said, it's going to get better. Just pay attention. It's going to get better. Well, now we're in nationals, nationals. And we're out in um, Phoenix, Arizona. And it was 102. And we were playing all day long. And we were up against the best in all the United States. Okay. And we blew through all of California, and that's a big state, right? So they, these people have been doing this. We had a play against Puerto Rico, Costa Rica, the Bahamas. We blew them out of the water, and they were like mean. I mean, they were like, oh, my God, we watched them, and we were terrified. But we ended up third out of 20,000 women. And when we were done and we got our trophy, my guide's message came back and said, okay, that was your test of faith. Now, oh, my you goodness. Put your racket down. It's time to do God's work. And my that's team, what happened with me. They they told me you're going to do this, and I was like, nah. And then look I, what they did. Yeah, here we are. The nah, nah, nah. I don't do that. Nah. We're the we're arguing every. Are time. you still with the husband that you were in the wreck with? Yes, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Forty something years. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and we're opposite as we are as different as night and day. Yeah. He doesn't want to know anything about this spirituality. He's yeah, if you're going to see angels in the clouds, yeah. <laughs> but he's an engineer, and he's got to see it to believe it. So yeah, but uh, yeah, we ended up third out of twenty thousand, and then it, so I, you drew that angel behind you on the wall there. Yeah, Raphael. That's Raphael. I That's have Raphael. that in my bedroom. Just yeah. gorgeous. There's, there's hundreds of paintings. I mean, my house looks like a. And and Joanne was the first, well, one of the first ones. She <clears throat> was given the message 
to use crystals and stones and she would crush them. And that's why her, her artwork is called Luminescence because she would crush them and actually paint them in and put them in, oh my, they're gorgeous. Oh, wow. But you did, you've written a book. Have you written more than one book or three? Well, not the first one um, that I did in Ohio. I did four books and then I just finished my fifth. I'm doing one for like the youngest. I'm going to start ordering your books so I can go through this. Called Amelia. Uh, the one I just finished is Amelia Blue. Okay. This is the first one. If you want a good laugh. Oh, my God. I'll start with that one. Surviving. Do you have I this on Amy? audio? No, I didn't do audio. Okay. I'll order it on Amazon. Um, Amazon might be sold out right now because uh, there's a run on this book. And it's like, but they have plenty of two and three. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been one thing after another. It's and, amazing. But, I love but, it. And they said humor is key. And you know this, Linda. You know. And, Girl, and I, that's the only thing that got me through this world was a good laugh. That's why we're such goofballs now. Yeah. You know, we can take anything seriously. And I, you, you've been through it all. Arlene's I've been through it all. And now we can look at something like, oh, my God. This, yeah. Lots so of we, we, we well, just, they have a good sense of humor over there, too. Yeah, oh we just, yeah, just we connect and just laugh for sure. Right. And then the lessons they have thrown more roadblocks in my path. It's almost like, yeah, let's just see what this girl's made out of. Like, can she handle this? So get this. I get this call from California out of the blue. And this girl is opening up an angel shop in the burbs of San Francisco. And she says, Joanne, she goes, we're looking for the you know, this artist because we're opening a grand opening, red carpet. And we saw you and we, we knew you were the girl. So they hired one of the top um, people in New York to come in and custom create all my art. And mind you, I got this eight foot painting, you know, that was in, in all these all these originals. And they're making metal boxes and it cost them a fortune. They shipped it over. I'm at the grand opening. And it's like, they were treating me like I was Madonna. It was like every top hotel, every five minutes, there'd be a knock on the door. Here's your masseuse. Here's your the nail people. Here's a ball gown rental. I'm like, what the? it was like so bizarre. And I get there and it's a grand opening champagne. And, it, you know, it was like limos out the wet wazoo. And they wanted me to auction off the eight foot painting for 300000 and I'm like, my guide said, don't you do it, girly. It's like, you are not to sell the originals ever. Except one day, I did. <laughs> one day they'll be in the museum. Yeah, I really did it. Karma's on you, baby. <laughs> anyway. I were said, they mad at you that you didn't allow them to do that? No, because I have lithographs made of everything. So I sell, okay. my, I sell everything in, in lithograph form. But something wasn't sitting right. You know when you get that like, Something stinks in here. I don't, I can't. Yeah, I don't like being fussed over either. Cause you know, when they told me I was going to do the YouTube video and I fought with them and then they said, uh, you will help calm them down. And their last words were, if your <laughs> ego gets in the way, we'll remove your gift. Oh, they said the same thing to me. Exactly. Exactly. It's not about. Well, you try not to get involved in anything. Yeah, you're special because yeah. you're not. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like it, the way I look at this, it's not my art. This is God's art. I'm just, this is I am the vessel. Yeah, I am the vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, they what, that's what we had with all of us, like the store too, when I had angels. It wasn't my, I said, I was just the caretaker. I was just, I was just the conduit to, to, and everybody felt that for 10 years that was coming in and out. So listen to this. So I think this lady comes in, I'm, now I'm in California. I don't know any of these people out there. Uh, one of them was, there were some movie stars out there and um, a lady came in, she says, Spirit told me to come in here, I'm to meet you, and I'm to take your art to the children of Medjugorje, the ones that have Mother Mary appearing to them. So that came from that visit. But I was all done, right? I flew home, I'm in Connecticut, and the same lady that was drawn to come in that store that took my work to Medjugorje, she goes, Joanne, I hope you're sitting down. I'm like, what? I'm not, mind you, I'm waiting for them to ship all my artwork back. She goes, um, there has been something terrible that happened here. And the lady, her mother, the owner's mother has been arrested for embezzling $5 million from a big university. 
that's how she was able to spend all this money on you. I don't know. She's, I don't know. I'm afraid you're going to lose all your artwork. I'm like, they might hold it. Right. I'm thinking, oh my God, these are originals. You know, my, I mean, I put so much into these at that point. And I'm the angels wouldn't let that happen, right? Out. Well, the lady from that was going to, you know, this lady that lived there that was going to Medjugorje, she says, let me call my friend. He was a painter of the big mansions in San Francisco. They call them the lovely ladies, you know. And he went, total stranger, mind you, I never met the guy, knocked door to door on all the corporations and got aluminum, metal, screws, foam. And he got all that, those paintings out and boxed them and got them shipped out. And the very next day, the very next day, the police came and put the yellow crime scene. They would have sold your paintings to make up for what she did, even though she technically wasn't the owner. But oh, my God. I mean, so, but this is the way they operate. Yeah. When, it, when it's God's work. I don't know. It's, there's they make it happen. Stories like that. I, you know, it's like, that's why I knew I had to write the books because it was crazy stories, one after another, after another. And that's like, well, somebody's protecting. Well, me. they told me to write a book too. I just finished it. It'll be oh, released in March. But oh. let me tell you, it, it, you know, I just do what they say. Cause I have to believe. Yeah. They were right about the YouTube and it seems to help people. So I mm -hmm. guess if this book helps a few people, that'll be good. Exactly. And don't worry about where the money's coming from or how it's going to get out there. No, I don't. But it's not about you, Linda. I'm self-publishing. Uh, you know, I have somebody helping me with all that. But. Self, I was going to say self-publish because the publishing yeah. industry has changed a lot. A lot. Oh, it's it's but crazy. They tried to three, four thousand dollars just to look at it. it. Oh yeah, exactly. You could you could spend twenty thousand on a book without yeah. even you know. But and then the other thing that happened was I had just finished World Peace Angel, and my guides were saying that this will be seen in front of twenty nations. And you will be um, presenting this in front of world leaders. And I'm like, oh, yeah, right. You know, I'm in this little farm town. Well, I finished it and I knew I had to get it to um, the first thing I thought of in my human brain was the United Nations. Right. So. I just called on my angels and I put an angel in, in, on each corner of the painting and I shipped it off to the U.N. I, first, I called them, of course. And um, the first thing I did was call the gift shop. Okay, that makes sense, right? Gift shop. And he's he hung up on me. He goes, this is a religious item. You'll offend many. And he just, Shh. and then I heard the voice that you get right back on that phone and don't you dare take no for an answer. I was like, oh God. And then I got this girl, Rosemary, and she says, look, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but send it. And then I shipped it off and Arlene and I flew down to Orlando. That's when we went to that spiritual conference, Arlene. Um, to you know, in Raymond Moody. What happened? So anyway, I get back from the Florida trip with Arlene, check the mailbox, and there's official, it says official business United Nations, you know, the raised thermographic, like really like serious stuff. I open it up, it's a personalized letter from Madeline Albright. Now at the time it didn't get any higher than that. You know how many people are at the UN? Yes. And she writes to me, and it was in the middle of a crisis. She was on TV that whole week because a plane went down, and she was involved in, in something with that. And she basically said, I was presented with your world peace angel by the chief of protocol, and I hung it on the outside of my office for all the world and visitors to see. Oh, my goodness. OMG. Then, shortly after, I get a call from the president of the World Citizen Diplomats, and she's Joanne. She goes, There's going to be a special event at the United Nations to honor the former president of Costa Rica, Rodrigo Carrazo, and his, it was Amelia de Barish, who was his then um, ambassador to Costa Rica. And she said, Do you have any large paintings? Well, I had just finished this eight foot painting. And I was like, Oh my God. And the guides told me, You, you are to make this painting X amount of inches across, feet. And not to go one in, not one toothpick wider. Well, it fit in my van when you took all the seats out. Oh, and I called Arlene and. Remember, you didn't have a car. You didn't know if it was going to fit in the car. Didn't you get I a had, car after? I had that green van at the time. Yeah. But and I, she called me and she said, because Joanne doesn't drive. She goes, I'm not driving into New York. And I said, and I said to her, what are you, crazy? I said, you have to go to this. 
I said, yeah, I'm I to come down for a photo shoot with Madeline Albright and to bring the painting. And you know, I made this lame excuse that I couldn't go. And that's when Arlene just, Arlene became Arlene. You know, she's like, what the hell are you crazy? <laughs> just, I'll close the shop. You're, you're Did you get that piece pa painting back or is that permanently at the United no, Nations? It was, no, it was used as a backdrop for this event. So we got it in your car. Wasn't for Arlene. That, oh my God, that's why I love you so much. I would have never. She, no, she said, no, you, we're going. I'll close the shop and I'll drive. And you remember how hard it was to, just trying to find a parking space? There was, we, couldn't get, we couldn't get a parking garage, remember? <laughs> Mafia, that like, big van? <laughs> get that thing out of here. You're not putting it in my Cigar room. guy, yeah. Yeah, I says, look, I've got a meeting with Madeline Albright. I've got to get in there now. I yeah. get here. So, but anyway, we hauled this thing. It was like Laurel and Hardy, right? Yes. Going down the street. We're like, what? Turn a corner and you wipe out 10 people. Linda, it's eight feet long. Eight and the wind, was blow the wind was blowing. Four feet wide. It was billowing. It was going to take us off like a hot air balloon. Oh, my God. We were laughing so hard. I thought we were going to die. I mean, this is us. This is our our life story, right, Arlene? Oh, my God. And and then we were in that. We finally got it up. And he did his speech. Um, Rodrigo, when he walked in, he looked, oh, my God, he's a light worker. It was a beautiful aura coming off of him. He donated a lot of his personal uh, property to Costa Rica for a peace museum. But, okay, we're sitting in the audience. And all of a sudden it's like we go out to lunch and come back and there's they put my name plate on the on the on the um with all these dignitaries on the stage. And the president of the world says, diplomat says, you're gonna go up there and you're gonna tell your story. I'm like, what? Like this is the UN. Are you crazy? So now I'm sitting at the table looking out at the audience and I'm flanked by these dignitaries. And I'm like, what am I doing? And I'm like, okay, God has a sense of humor, right? So I'm like, almost like laughing to myself. Like, I have no idea. What am I supposed to talk about? And she poked me in the ribs and she said, you're next. And wake him up. So now I'm, I just did an Oprah. I mean, I pulled out the microphone. I'm walking around and I'm like, who here believes in angels? And everybody just, <laughs> <laughs> like, the this is like, that monk nothing. was in the <laughs> audience, the monk. <laughs> Early and I shook the whole place up. But the whole time when I was up there, there was this uh, llama. He looked like, oh, my God, the bald head, like Mr. Clean, you know, the orange yeah. robe with the wooden beads. And he never took his eyes off of me during my speech. And he just like it was like a laser. He never blinked. And when I was done, he gets up and goes in the aisle, you know, that was direct, you know, opposite of me, like, you know, from the stage. And he bowed to me. And I was like, who is this guy? And did you throw some loose change at him or? <laughs> Jesus. And then I, when I asked who it was, he was Lama Gangchen. He was like the head of the World Peace Federation. This is like, he's like one of the oldest Tibetan original monks and the most wow, popular to all the royalty queen, queens and kings in India. And he he's the one that brought spirituality so you could meditate at the UN. And uh, anyway, I just found out he died, Arlene. Oh. Um, yeah, COVID. 2020 in Illinois. Wow. Yeah, well, Tik Nikan, Nikan had died too. Yeah, it's like the great. I met him. Um, yeah. It's oh my God, just so many stories. So tell, tell us a couple. I mean, you had other episodes where, because this is about NDs, that where you um, you had flat, you flatlined or you had your cardiac events happening with your. Well, eight other, with, you it was know, on Good Friday. I just read a story. Just Days ago, I was a um, uh, was like a psychiatric PhD, and she said you do not have to go through the tunnel in order to have an NDE. Which I thought that's interesting. If you have a major blow to the head or uh, trauma, like a lot of these children are beaten, you know, in their early, you know, when they're little, um, she says a lot of those are the people that start seeing angels. I was like, oh, no, you don't have to flat. You don't have to flatline. But there's no. different things. There's out of body experience. There's yeah, you don't have to flatline. And now I just heard from this. Uh, I was talking about this Dr. Scott Taylor. There's okay. shared NDs. There's okay. shared NDs. If you're around a bed with somebody that you love, whatever, and yeah. they're going, and you're open to that, you right. could go with them. Oh, you wow. go, but you don't go all the way. He explains oh, wow. it like going to the airport and you go through TSA, but you yeah. don't get on the plane. <laughs> Okay. You go to part of the way. Yeah. Well, I, used to, I I was doing out of body. I'd be laying in bed and all of a sudden, and Linda, I don't, do you leave your body? No. Like, 
Mm-hmm. I used to, but I got scared. And I asked him yeah. not to do that anymore. I got scared too. Well, Because I went through the roof and I could feel the cold air. But what would happen right before I'd leave, because that was in the days of Shirley McLean and she talked about it. And I thought, well, I may try. And as I rested, the whole bed started to shake. Oh, wow. Like it was an earthquake, but it was me going out of my body. Oh, man. So what would happen with me, and that's why I was going to ask you if, you if this happened to you. When I'm laying in bed, I hear a certain tone. And I wish to God I knew what that yeah. tone was. But it's, I think it's a tone like it's a vibrational energy that's on the other realm, in the other realm. Because when I was eight years old, I had a visit with Jesus. And oh. I didn't even know who he was. But when I went there, it was beautiful, but there was a tone. It was a weird tone. tone. And I wish to God I had my son's equipment, because he's a musician, to know what that tone was. Because he yeah. can tell you. It's probably but, one that you can't. You, there's probably nothing to match it. It's, it's only matched. In it's, in, it's in a different, but it's in a different. But it, when that tone would go off in my left ear, I thought, well, <laughs> I'm going to take off. And sure enough, I'd start lifting up. And I noticed <laughs> if I put pressure on my feet, it would be like being on a carpet. You know, I would tilt forward. And if I put pressure on my shoulders, I'd tilt back. Do you still go or did you say I'm done with this? Oh, because what they showed me, they said, you don't want to go playing out there. Yeah, you know, I, play. I just didn't like that feeling. And yeah. I was afraid, so you can't go in afraid because then the negative will hit you. But yeah, I'm I'm still trying to figure out why these almost near death accidents keep coming to me. Just recently, uh, well, 2018, I was doing a big spiritual show out in Phoenix, and I drove all the way cross country. I'm finally an, only an hour away from home, and we're on this freeway. I'm like, oh God, thank God I'll be home like in a half hour, 40 minutes, and. I'm again, John's driving, I'm the passenger. And this, you know, those nine car haulers, those big haulers that solid steel starts coming into our lane like he didn't see us. And all of a sudden it was like an explosion of metal. And he ripped all the all the metal came off the side of our van. And the only thing between me and this truck was a paper thin piece of plastic. Oh, my God. And there was no place to go because they had the stanchions, you know, on one side. So that we were wedged. I couldn't get out of the car. And the truck kept going. And not one person stopped. Not one person stopped. And it's like, this is where I talk about the power of prayer. Oh, my God. You just started praying right away? When I got on. You know, they were there helping to keep you from being killed in this crash. Some They said somebody had to put their hand and save you from that because I'm not when I'm I'm not exaggerating a quarter of an inch I'd be like squash and I got on something told me just get on Facebook to all my friends and I told them what happened and they start sending me light and prayers and I could literally feel them coming in like ribbons of light and that's what got me through so anybody out there do not under underestimate the power of prayer Oh, my God. It works. It's fantastic. Yeah. And the angels said from their advantage up there, it looks like ribbons of light streaming up to them. And it's like, oh, my God. So, yeah, power of prayer is. So you're not finished yet. We're here. All of us are here. We're going to be here for the, we want to know the, you know us, we want to know the grand finale. I don't know if I want to know, Arlene. Huh? I don't know if I want to know. I just hope it's not in a horrible, you know, car thing where you're. Well, no. This is you know what happened with me with breast cancer is when I handed my life over because I was begging to live because my kids were still young. I had no breast, no hair, walking down a path, and I said, "Please don't let me die." And the man said in my ear, as clear as day, "There's no such. You know, there's no such thing as death." We know. And I felt foolish, and I handed my life over into thy hands. I commenced my spirit. And something profound happened to me. But from that moment on, I knew it doesn't matter if alive or dead, it all works out. Exactly. I mean, nobody wants to go home. I, mean, I, I don't know how you feel, you guys, but don't you feel like I'm having too much fun here? Yeah, I, there's still things I have oh, to do. Oh, I know. Like, no, we have, we have stuff now to, I was meant to do. We have, we have stuff to do. But I said for many years, and I've told you this, Joanne, before, I said, I, I just, 
because we know we've been back and forth many times. I don't want to go through a horrific, you know, I'm not going to be laying there for months anyways, if you have to cross over. So I said, now I don't want to go through that process. So I want, like they said in, in biblical times, right? And what did Christ say? He said, you shall do this and greater than I. And I always say, I want to know how to change the water to wine. But I also want, remember the clouds used to come down and they would lift people up like Star Trek into the, that's what I, that's what I, send down the cloud. We'll walk on the cloud and we'll just go, whoof. <laughs> Arlene and I always laughed. We always thought, you know, we were the ones that were up there drinking dirty martinis. <laughs> time we asked for volunteers and everybody stepped back. Yeah, we stumbled there forward. Go. There you <laughs> go. Then we went, what the hell? <laughs> hell did we just, we got off on the wrong elevator, honey. So one thing, I'm, I'm going to ask, I'm going to throw this on, on both of you. What have you noticed with NDEers, um, how they're different after that NDE? Because they're not the same. They have a glow to them. They have and a glow to them. And what else? There, there's a piece of the cotton as they show they're up. Awake. Huh? They're awake. Awake. They're awake. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate, don't you appreciate everything? I could stare into a face of a flower. For yes. Yep. The yeah. whole universe Wait. there. Yeah. And it's then awake. easier, you, you, it's quicker to forgive people now. You have more patience. Yeah. Now you realize yeah. this is probably a blessing in disguise. So knock it off, Joanie. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Except when we have, except when we've had that cough for six months or eight oh, months. Geez. Oh, jeez. Well, do you know what? And you said this to me, Arlene, because I go 200 miles an hour with my hair on fire, and I don't know how to sit my ass down for five minutes. You know, it's like you do too much, Joanne. That's the angels are just telling you to sit in your, you know what? And it's like, however they need to do it, they'll do it. Yeah, and 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 sometimes it's hard for them if we're all constantly in motion. You know, exactly. I find I start feeling tired. Because I do too much too, I the readings and shows and no, you're you know, constantly I start noticing and I get tired. And then shipping artwork out and writing books and I gotta write the next book and oh my but that's don't you feel like that's all part of the like, oh my god, I have to get this done? Because you don't yeah. you're gonna go home. And you feel yeah. like there's so much more I could do to help humanity. Because yeah. it's no longer the focus is no longer on you, right? Right, yeah. exactly. Now it's about I gotta do this for humanity. But yeah. as they say here, if we touch one soul in this lifetime, yeah. that there, it's yeah. it's magnified. So so all of us, we're going to be up there. <laughs> I have my castle. Well, I have a big, I already know it's a field stone, big castle. And you're going to hear mu music playing. So just come to it. And it's going to be just a big party. Oh, a big party. <laughs> We need to set a date right now. So in the future, we all meet. Yeah. And but don't forget to serve snacks. Oh my God, we're going to have whatever you want. So Joanne, so we're finishing up because this is about balance. So what would your, out of all the experiences, your balance message be on this? Well, so, whatever you do, especially because there's a lot of people that do energy work out there, facilitators, you can only keep giving and giving and giving so much. You've got to, got to give back to yourself. So go for that massage, go for that energy work. Go for whatever makes you feel like the little princess for the day, the queen for a day. Remember, remember you've yeah. got to balance it out. You can't just keep giving. Daniel Brinkley had told me this one when I was at a workshop. It's the infinity symbol. He said, you know, the number eight is the infinity. Yeah. So when he's with people, like if you're this, you know, you, you see that image of the infinity going back and forth and around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's giving back and forth. Exactly. So and when we're having a bad day, Arlene and I know to call each other up and we laugh till we almost. Yeah, that helps. Laughing. That helps. So yeah. nice it was a delight meeting you, Joanne. Oh, my God. This was a, a such You're an just honor. Just a doll. Yeah. And oh you, glow, you glow, girlfriend, with the light. Oh, <laughs> I'm just so glad we finally got to meet. And I honor both of you for doing this show and everything you do over there. My God. We need more light workers in the world. So thank, thank you, honey. And Linda, what do you say? Oh, be the change you want to see. That's right. And from our hearts to your hearts, everybody out there, we love you. <clears throat> Enjoy, love, peace. If you have inner peace, you have it all. Thank you so much for watching, listening. Please subscribe. Oh, Joanne will put all her, for all the people that have been now, we'll put their your information, your website, and everything will be on there. Where to contact you for your artwork and your books and that, okay? Thank you so right. much. I love you Thank guys. You, sweetie. Love you guys. Thank you. I'm going to order your book. Cool. Take care. Okay. Thank Bye -bye. you, babes. Bye.